So we just came out of the Senate hearing on strategic uh, competitiveness with China, and the witness was the Deputy Secretary Kurt Campbell, who's only been on the job for about five months. Um, but in this hearing, uh, Anne, did we hear the word cooperation at all? No, nope, we didn't hear cooperation at all. We heard competition and people being our adversaries, not not our competitors, but our adversaries. The whole country of China being our country adversary. Of China, the biggest country in the world with the most people in the world. Yeah, and instead of talking about how we could compete with China, even from an economic view, there was some of that, but a lot of it was about military as well. So could you talk a, a bit about the Indo-Pacific and what the U.S. is doing there? Yeah, well, living in Hawaii, and that's the headquarters of the Indo-Pacific Command, we know that the rim of the Pacific well, the naval war practice has, is still going on there, uh, where we have uh, 29 countries, 45 ships, 150 aircraft, 25,000 people from these 20, 29 countries, eight of whom are from NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So Europe is moving in militarily into the Western Pacific. And the dangers that we have there, so many naval exercises that are going on, uh, a lot having to do with Taiwan and the small islands that the West is saying China should not be militarizing these islands. So one of the things that came up, uh, Senator Rubio said that, uh, well, China is our competitor. In fact, they're, with, they're winning on electric cars, they're winning on nuclear energy, and on then solar. solar things. Uh, we would like to have more of that. But then he, he brought up ships shipbuilding, and it's true. The United States has given up its capability, its capacity to build ships, and yet China is churning them out every, every day they are. They are the largest maritime country in the world, and that's a fact. So there was a lot of talk in there about Africa and the fear that China is gaining on us in Africa. And it was interesting, I thought, there that they actually talked about the minerals that we need for our businesses. Um, what did you think about that? Well, I thought it was very interesting when Senator Young made a little slip of a phrase. Bringing American capital and expertise and standards uh, to Africa so that we can keep uh, exploiting uh, <clears throat> Uh, so that we can uh, 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 exploring uh, where we can get these minerals. It's China that's uh, exploiting them in their Belt and Road initiatives, which are are huge. I mean, they did uh, build a railroad in Kenya, 400 and some odd miles of it, and they've got projects all over the the, the African con continent. Whereas the United States is not even putting ambassadors in embassies in countries in Africa. In fact, uh, Senator Coons in his opening criticized China for building all of those roads in Africa. Um, another thing that came up was about China and trying to be involved in finding a solution in Ukraine and them saying, well, this is Europe. What does China have to do with Europe? and pushing for Kurt Campbell to say that China should not have a seat at the table in any kind of negotiations. Now, of course, uh, many people have been saying China needs to be at the table because China can push Russia. So what did you think about that whole talk about not letting China be part of negotiating a solution? Well, I thought it was uh, pretty disingenuous, as was the fact that in the opening statement of Senator Cardin, uh, he forgot to mention that it is China that brought all the factions of the Palestinians together. And in China, that is where they've worked out some sort of an agreement that parties in, in Palestine can now cooperate with, with each other, which gives us some hope uh, for uh, the future for Palestine. He also criticized China in his opening for negotiating a, a Saudi-Iran agreement to try to bring peace between those two countries that have been in conflict for so long. Yeah, and they keep saying it's a developing country. And that developing country is actually, it's well developed and they ought to be paying more on the international organizations and things like that. Uh, but then if they are a developed country and they want to use their influence to help bring peace in areas, that's not good. Absolutely. In fact, um, one of the more progressive 
uh, Congress people was criticizing China for spending more money in the UN yeah. and, and expanding its influence in the UN. So it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you uh -huh. don't, right? Yeah, and trying to get your own people into various international organizations, which the United States does all the time, except that now Kirk Campbell was saying, we actually need some more help. We need more people in the State Department in order to be more active in these international organizations. And damn those Chinese because they have way more diplomats than we have. That's right. They put them in those 20 countries where we don't even have ambassadors. What are they doing? So to sum up, I think our t-shirts say it all. China is not our enemy and we want cooperation with China.